Hello students, welcome to another math homework help by your teacher Anne. Now, distributive property is another property that is so important that can be applied in using multiplication and addition and also can be applied in real life situations. Distributive property combines addition and multiplication. So, to multiply a sum by a number, multiply each addend by the number outside the parentheses, such as this one. So, the number outside, you multiply it to each of the number inside. And then you have to go ahead and write it, the 2 times 7 outside, and then multiply that 2 to the next number inside. So, you have a 2 times 4. Then, don't forget to write down the addition in the middle. Using a distributive property, we just created two expressions that are equivalent to each other. Now, let's apply distributive property with real-world problems. Each of the three friends buy a ticket that costs $12 and a drink that costs $2. Okay, so in this situation, each ticket costs $12 and each drink costs $2. And each one of them is buying a drink and a ticket. Now, our job is to generate an expression using distributive property, then determine the total cost. So, based on the word problem, what are the numbers that we can add together and placed inside our parentheses? Those are the money, right? Or the cost of the drink and the ticket. Put the dollar sign on the numbers so they make all sense to you. Now, which is the other number that we have on the problem that's given? It's the number of friends. Okay, isn't it? That three friends. We cannot add it to our money. doesn't make sense. That's why the ones we can add are inside. And the number of three friends should be outside. Because the number of people should be multiplied to each of the money that they have to pay for. Does that make sense? Multiplying the $12 by 3 is just like adding $12 three times. So the next number we have to multiply 3 with is the $2. Now which operation should we place right in the middle of them? It should be the addition because that's the last thing we have to do when we have to get the total cost at the end. Again, we were just able to create an expression that is equivalent to the given expression above using a distributive property, okay? Like on the test, you really don't have to solve. There will be questions like which expression is equivalent to this given expression. Then you have to apply the distributive property. Now let's find out if these two equivalent expressions will really come down to the same total cost. So, according to PEMDAS, everything inside the parentheses, we have to do them first. Then multiply by three people. $42 is the total cost. Will the other expression have the same total cost? Let's find out. So, according to PEMDAS, the order of operations, you have to multiply first and then add last. And we still get the same total cost. That's why these two expressions are still equivalent to each other. Now let's do more practice using distributive property. 6 times 2 plus 1 half. This is an expression that is equivalent to this given expression. Now let's try to solve it. Multiply first. 6 times 1 half is just like getting the half of a 6. Then the last thing to do is add. Final answer here is 15. Next is 15 times 3 plus 1 third. Multiply first. 15 times 1 third is just like dividing 15 by 3. You're getting 3 parts of 15, so that's 5. Then add it to your 45. Final answer here is 50. 5 times 9 plus 1 half. 
Multiply first. 5 times 1 half here is like getting half of $5. Therefore, it's $2.50. Now add that to your 45. 47.50 is the final answer. Now let's learn how to factor an expression. How can I create another expression that's still equivalent to 10 plus 4? Think of the greatest common factor of 10 and 4 and place it here outside this parenthesis. That will be 2. Now you think, what number can you multiply with 2 as the first number here? That will equal to 10. Isn't it 2 times 5 will give you back 10? So now think of what is that next number that you have to write down here. And when you multiply by 2, we'll give you back 4. And that's going to be 2. Therefore, you just created two equivalent expressions. This one is just like your distributive property problem, isn't it? Let's try another one. Think of the greatest common factor of 12 and 15. It's going to be 3. So that's going to be the number outside our parenthesis. But what are the two numbers here that we need to write down? So when we multiplied each one of them by 3, we're still going to get back 12 and 15. That should be a 4 here. When you multiply 3 times 4, that's going to become 12. And what will be the next number here? It should be 5. Because 3 times 5, that will give you back the 15. And look, if I just go ahead and use distributive property on this expression, I will have this expression. And then if I solve this expression, I will get this expression. That's why all these three expressions, they are just all equivalent to each other. Now go ahead and factor out the expressions on number 3, 4, and 5. After factoring out, this is what you're going to have. But then you can apply distributive property and have another equivalent expression. We just created equivalent expressions using factoring expressions and then applying distributive property once again. Now let's have another real life example. Write and simplify an expression for the total cost of six friends to go to the museum if only four view the mummy exhibit. So you have to read twice or more until you understand the problem. You are being asked to write an expression down so you will need the numbers like six friends and you know they want to go to the museum but we don't have the cost to enter the museum so we're just going to use the variable m so six friends times the cost of the museum but out of the six friends only four wanted to see the mom exhibit once they were inside the museum therefore four times e because we don't know how much is the cost to enter the exhibit? Then the last thing is to add them up. So to better understand this, that M is a variable that represents the cost to enter the museum. The E is a variable that represents the cost that we don't know to enter, to enter that mom exhibit. And four of them want to enter that exhibit. All of the friends entered the museum, so they have to pay for the entrance ticket to get to the museum, all six of them. Then at the end, all you have to do is add all their cost. Now, can we write another expression that's still equivalent to this? Yes, we can factor it out. What is the greatest common factor of six and four is two, so place it outside the parenthesis. Now we have to write down 3m inside. Why? Because when you multiply 2 times 3m, that will give us back the 6m. 2e as the next number. That will give us back the 4e when multiplied by 2. So now we just created or written down 
two expressions that are equivalent to each other. The first one is 6m plus 4e, and the next one is 2 times 3m plus 2e inside a parenthesis. Is there another expression that we can write down that's still equivalent to these two expressions? Yes, let's use the distributive property. So 2 times 3m, and then 2 times 2e, then copy the addition sign, place it in between them here. Now we just created the third expression that's still equivalent to the first one, and this. Now don't forget to do your homework, and I'll see you in class. Bye!